So, welcome to the entrepreneurial revolution. The 21st century is indeed the entrepreneurial century. It's a global entrepreneurial revolution. We know about places like China and India in terms of what's happening there, but did you know there's an entrepreneurial revolution in Uganda? There's an entrepreneurial revolution in Vietnam. There's an entrepreneurial revolution in Chile. The rate at which new ventures, for-profit, non-profit, new ventures are being created has never been higher in history. The rate at which new products and services are being introduced, all-time highs. The rate at which patents are being awarded. The U.S. Patent Office is two years behind. And this global revolution finds women starting ventures faster than society at large, minorities starting ventures faster than society at large. And I think the most telling statistic is today, the millennial generation, 75% of high school kids want someday to have their own venture. Not a job for life with some big company, their own venture. To be part of something bigger than themselves. My favorite quote from Shaw <coughs> is that the reasonable man or woman adapts himself or herself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself or herself, such that all progress depends on unreasonable men and women. That's not a passive statement. That's an in-your-face statement. How unreasonable are you? Are you thinking unreasonably? If we can't think unreasonably, there's no progress. We will not deal with homelessness in Gainesville. We will not deal with war. It's about thinking unreasonably. And so entrepreneurship, at its core, at its essence, is where unreasonable meets discipline, where your alternative thoughts, your edgy thinking, your dreams, the possibilities meet rigor and logic and structure, discipline. The two magic words that I hope govern your life every day are what if. Not why not, why you shouldn't, why you can't, why now's not the right time, why you don't have enough money. What if? What if there was a better way to house the homeless in Gainesville? What if there was a better way to pick up garbage, to give this talk, to register students on this campus? At its core, entrepreneurship is fire in a bottle. It's about empowerment and transformation. To be empowered to create your own future, your own possibilities, your own ventures, your own dreams, your own effect on the world. To be able to transform ourselves, our families, our communities. To transform companies and industries and markets. And let me give you an example of this empowerment and transformation. There's a woman. She teaches second grade at an inner city school in Cincinnati. That's what she knows. That's all she knows. A lot of the kids that go to her inner city school are poor. They can't afford to go to school. And so they can't afford basic school supplies. She reaches in her own pocket, takes out money, and buys school supplies for her students. Not solving a problem, it's a band-aid. But she looks at the situation and she says, that's not acceptable. I will not accept that. And so unreasonably, she goes out to all the major companies in Cincinnati. She doesn't ask for a handout. She signs a contract for a dollar a year, and she takes all their excess office supplies off their hands. 
Then she goes to this guy with this dilapidated, useless old structure, old warehouse. She doesn't ask for a handout. She signs a lease for a dollar a year, and she leases this place. And she and her buddies spend their nights and their weekends. They fix this place up, paint it wild colors, get a, give it a vibe. And they open a nonprofit venture called Crayons to Computers, where any inner city school teacher can go, take a cart, walk the aisles, fill the cart with sticky notes and crayons and pads and software and hardware, get to the checkout counter, show their teaching credential, and pay nothing. And if you're not from an inner city school, and you'll put in 30 hours of volunteer time at Crayons to Computers, you can ask stuff for your students. And this crazy, unreasonable lady doesn't know where to stop. You can't franchise a nonprofit. Well, there are now 42 crayons to computers in cities around America. And her unreasonableness knows no bounds. So today, at crayons to computers, much of their stuff is actually made by prisoners. Imagine some guy doing 25 to life hard time. He gets a hand-scrawled note from some second grade kid saying, Thank you. Because of you, I get to go to school. That's empowerment. That's transformation. So my message is that the at-risk person in this room is the person not prepared for this entrepreneurial age, this time of change, of turbulence, of unreasonableness, of possibility. So what have I learned? in 35 years of working with entrepreneurs and working with students that wanted to be entrepreneurs. First, anybody can do it. Second, it's a process. It's a learnable process. It's a, ma a, a, a manageable process. It's not mystical, it's not magical. It's a manageable process. Third, you gotta be in the arena. It's not about talking, it's about walking. And if you're in the arena, if you're engaged, if you're trying things, doors open, new possibilities emerge, such that almost always what you create is not what you started out to create. In fact, it's not about creating the next Facebook. We get enamored with Amazons and Facebooks and these glorious companies. It's about letting a thousand flowers bloom. Ventures take all kinds of forms, for-profit, non-profit. We talk about survival ventures, artisans selling their wares at the public market, lifestyle ventures, managed growth ventures, aggressive growth ventures. We talk about social ventures. Venturing inside existing organizations. How about public sector entrepreneurship? How we venture inside the government, the public sector? For each of you, the idea of being an entrepreneurial artist, an entrepreneurial engineer, an entrepreneurial social worker, and every day in your life, all kinds of venture possibilities. There's nothing stopping you today in your apartment complex from doubling the amount of recycling activity that's happening. That's a venture. There's nothing stopping you in your church today from launching a, vent a venture to help deal with the next natural disaster. Often people ask themselves, if I'm going to do something entrepreneurial, do I have the right stuff? Here's a little secret. There is no right stuff. Every entrepreneur is different. There's no prototype. There's no model. 30 years of research on the psychology and sociology of the entrepreneur has told us almost nothing. In fact, what we've found that's most interesting is the things that make up an entrepreneur are formed by the venture experience. What I'm saying is, Entrepreneurs create ventures, but much more importantly, ventures create entrepreneurs. 
one learns to be a calculated risk taker, to be tolerant of ambiguity. That it's about friction and discomfort. Each of you think of the most amazing thing in your, you've done in your life. I'll wager it wasn't when you were most comfortable. I'll wager it's when you're in your discomfort zone. It's about healthy dissatisfaction, an optimistic, positive view that everything can be better. There's always a better way. <clears throat> it's about a different way of thinking. You're not poor, you're rich. You're surrounded by resources. We take 28 students each summer to South Africa and we go into the poverty-stricken shanty towns and work with historically disadvantaged entrepreneurs. One of my favorite entrepreneurs was a guy named Tondo. Tondo <coughs> was an artist, he was brilliant. He could take Coke cans and cut them up and make anything. He could make uh, bracelets, he could make necklaces, he could make hats. He even made, I'm not kidding, a full-length woman's dress out of cut-up Coke cans. But what Tondo loved to do, so that was his venture, but what he loved to do was to dance. He loved to dance, and he loved to teach dance, and he loved to teach dance to the poor kids that lived in the shanty towns. The problem was the poor kids, of course, couldn't afford the dance lessons. So Tondo has them pay him in Coke cans. They go out, collect the cans, give them to Tondo. That's his raw material for his business. And in exchange, they learn to dance. Resources are everywhere. One of the entrepreneurs we worked with is a guy named Lavulio Rani. Lavulio knew nothing about business when we met him 10 years ago. His dream, his what if, was I want to bring computer literacy to the impoverished shanty towns, to the townships of Kailicha and Guguletu and so forth. So he starts this business, computer training business. Today, Lavoyo has 42 locations in townships across South Africa. Hundreds and thousands of people are computer literate because of him. And today, the way he does things is exactly how he did things 10 years ago, thinking differently. He's getting started. He goes to this radio station. The radio station is just getting started at about the same time in the township of Kailicha. And he says to the radio station owner, you have no computers, and you don't know how to use them if you did. I'll tell you what, I'll give you computers and I'll give you computer training. Not for free advertising, for a radio show. And he gets a 15 minute radio show, not talking about his business, talking about technology to the impoverished people in the township. You'd think nobody will listen to that. It becomes the most popular show on the radio station. Ten years later, he still does that show, and it's instrumental in how he's marketed and been successful. Or th thinking differently, thinking unreasonably. Take the guy who starts a restaurant. That's his dream. He wants to have this restaurant. He puts everything he has into the restaurant. And he's out of money. And he's about to open. And it's restaurants. They're incredibly competitive. And he hasn't got a penny for marketing. He's in deep trouble. When in doubt, have a party. He has a party. Free booze, free food, fun, festive, great party. But he only invites one kind of person to the party. Every hairdresser in that town. <laughs> what do hairdressers do all day? They talk, and they talk, and they talk. You tell me, you can spend half a million on radio and TV advertising, or you can have a party for hairdressers. 
the hairdressers were more impactful. You have to think that way. You talk to a great pianist. You talk to a great swimmer. They will tell you their greatness at the end of the day is about practice. And here's the problem. You can't be creative. You can't be entrepreneurial if you don't practice it every day. Did you practice your creativity today? What have you done in the last week that was entrepreneurial? You get better at it only by practice. And it's about failure. We have to embrace failure. People who try entrepreneurial things fail every day. They get the price wrong, they get the operating hours wrong, they get the location wrong. They constantly fail. It's about quick learning on the fly, adjustment, adaptation. How many times will they fail before they cure breast cancer? But how do they look at each of those failures? We have to change our whole outlook. So my what if question for all of you is what if every person in this room, every student on this campus, every person in this town, everyone in America started a venture? Think of the possibilities, the new ideas, the new possibilities, the new products, the new services, the, the ad adaptation, the, 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 the change, the doors that open. just got back from Haiti where we took 10 students and they worked with some young entrepreneurs to try to help them get going. This is one of those entrepreneurs. His dream is to take recycled materials and create fertilizer in a country that is way short on fertilizer and has to pay ridiculous global prices for fertilizer. What if he gets this thing going? What if he employs five people? What if those five people each come from a family with six people? And those 30 people then now have money to buy more things at stores. And those stores then now have more sales so they can try new products and new things. That's the empowering, transformative possibility of entrepreneurship. So my question is, what is your venture? What is your venture going to be? How many ventures will you create today and this week and this year? Live the unreasonable life. Thank you.